This is Neil Schneider for MTBS TV at CES 2012. I'm at the Silicon Micro Display booth here at CES, and I, I think we're really going to see some exciting stuff. To my immediate left is Paul Jin, CEO of Silicon Micro Display, and to his left is Michael Jin, uh, Chief Technology Officer. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Thank you. Now, uh, I gathered the, the product of the year is the head-mounted display. Uh, so maybe you could tell us a little bit about what you have on display today. So what we have here is a full HD, so this is a two, mil uh, two million pixel uh, head-mounted display. It's two different displays, uh, two displays, one for the left, one for the right. And uh, it gives uh, 3D stereo vision. Uh, and it takes any HDMI source, so including uh, Xbox, PlayStation 3, Blu-ray, uh, anything that can put out an HDMI, we can connect to that. Okay, excellent. Now, uh, remind me, what's the resolution? Uh, it's 1080p, so it's a 2 million pixels, yeah. So that's, that's pretty unique. I, I mean, I know there's other brands out there which right. have, have promoted HD content, but right. I, to my knowledge, this is one of the first I've seen that is 1080p. That's right. Uh, there are other uh, competitor products out there that's a quarter HD, so it's about 500,000 pixels, and there's another uh, model that's a 1 million pixels, and ours is 2 million pixels, so we're the first one that has 2 million pixels in a consumer uh, price point. Excellent. Now, Michael, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the manufacturing of these displays, because to my knowledge, you know, at the consumer end at least, it's unheard of to, to have such high resolution on a head-mounted display. I mean, the, the highest I had seen previously was 640 by 480 per eye, and that was over the course of years. I mean, it, this is a, a major accomplishment. Maybe you could share a little bit as to how it's possible to get this 1080p, 1080p resolution on a head-mounted display. Okay, well, uh we actually uh, originally started as a company uh, providing micro displays for a rear projection TV that was uh, full HD. And uh, we just applied the micro display technology to the HMD units because we thought that our display architecture was unique enough that we can actually uh, achieve that. And that's the uh, end result is that we have now uh, 3D full HD uh, HMD. Excellent. Now, uh, when you're talking about the HDMI specification, uh, so can you tell us a little bit about, about what the limitations are or what we can expect out of HDMI with your product? Okay, well, um, uh, we are supporting our H HDMI 1.3 uh, spec, uh, 1.3a to be specific. And uh, so we're, we actually have a next generation product uh, brewing that will actually you know, uh, be HDMI 1.4. Uh, uh, compatible, uh, not only in, uh, in the comp with the compatibility, but we'll also have a uh, eight megapixel version that uh, we haven't decided whether to, uh, to actually uh, put a consumer product out uh, for of that or not. But uh, we certainly have that in the works now. Okay, because I, I know that for gamers, like uh, on console, 720p is very much standard. But I know for PC gamers, they're very excited to actually have 1080p gaming uh, at 60 frames per second per eye. So, uh, but your product is in development, and I gather so for, for gaming at a minimum, we could expect 720p gaming. But for movies, uh, I take it 1080p is the way to go? For this current product, yes, we support full Blu-ray content in native resolution, which means that 1080p content is what's, what the Blu-ray standard is, and so our displays natively support that resolution. Um, so for Blu-ray viewing, this is a really great experience. Uh, for viewing, yeah. Excellent. Now, I think uh, from what I understand, you're going a little bit of beyond the boundaries when it comes to, to gaming. I mean, when I'm thinking of 3D gaming, I'm thinking of, you know, PC gaming with DDD or NVIDIA drivers or with console with Sony and PlayStation. Um, but I understand you're, you're looking at something else as well. Can you give us some details? Yeah, so um, a, a market that's really interesting to us is something called aug augmented reality. And um, our display is actually a transparent technology which allows you to view the content as well as the outside world. And that really creates an interesting set of uh, opportunities in terms of creating, whether, whether they're games or whether they're just uh, um, useful professional applications, where you can have a display on, see the real world, and see content laid on top of that, that world. Um, to give an example, so for, for a professional application, you could imagine uh, some service engineer out in the field, they're fixing something, and they can have the, uh, the viewer on, and while they're looking at what they're fixing, they can have the, you know, the instructions for how to repair that unit you know, displayed right on top of what they're looking at. Um, for more for a gaming side, or more for kind of um, 
uh, more uh, mass consumer application, if you will. Um, you can imagine uh, similar kinds of games that you see on gaming consoles or even on PC. You could potentially see uh, having two different signal paths, one to the main display, the big you know, display monitor that you have, and then another signal path coming to the HMD unit. You can see through the HMD unit to, you know, to view the main content, but you can also have secondary content that's only on the HMD device itself. So you can imagine, uh, for example, a driving game. You can see the road, you can see your dashboard down there, but on your HMD you will see other gauges and other you know, GPS information. Uh, another example, first person shooter. The main uh, scenery is on the display, but on your HMD you will see your GPS location. Is this unit transparent? I mean, I it is. So when we ship this unit, it'll be 10% transparent. Uh, we also have a second generation of this product, which will be 50% transparent, and it's, it'll be user, user selectable up to 50%. Okay, so when we're talking about transparent, because uh, you know I'm looking at it and it's a black unit, and I'm trying to see where the transparency is, but we're really talking about like at the front of this, yep. it would be clear that you can see right through. Right. For CES, our demo uh, booth, we decided to put this dark smoke glass in the front just so that you know people can view more content very quickly because it's a very bright environment. Um, but when we ship this unit, you know the user will have the option to purchase one that's clear, in which case it will have the 10% transparency. Excellent. Now, let's talk a little bit about the unit itself. I mean, uh, how much does it weigh? How do you wear it? Maybe you could give us some details. So it's a 180 grams uh, for the HMD unit itself. Um, so it's a fairly light unit. Um, and how you use it, um, it basically has uh, the ear stems that are flexible, so you can adjust it to your eye, just put it on, and I'm actually viewing, looks like, tangled content. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, in addition, uh, this unit doesn't have it, but we also have head straps here that can be adjusted, so you can actually you know, pull it up tight or put it in the right position for, uh, for each person. Uh, and uh, it also has, uh, if you look here, I'll hold it this way, uh, IPD adjusters on the bottom, so for different um, uh, inner pupil distance, you can adjust that. And we also have a mute button here, and what that does is it mutes both the audio and it turns the displays off, so you can actually see the outside world. So for example, if you're watching a movie while you're traveling on, uh, on a plane, uh, you could be watching content as the flight attendant comes. You can you know, mute it, and you can still see them and order your drink and not, you know, not miss that by you know, being consumed in your, uh, what you're watching. So um, that's what the mute button is really for. Um, and the headphones are right here. And this is basically the HMD cable that goes to the control unit. And I'll actually show you the controller unit. Okay, so this is the controller unit. It's virtually the same size as an iPhone. It's a little bit thicker than an iPhone, um, but it has the power button. It has a, a OSD menu, on-screen display menu button, which, uh, from which you can adjust brightness, flicker, um, and this is the adjustment of down, up, down uh, buttons, and this is the, uh, another mute button here, which you can, it's the same function as the, the other mute button that you saw. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as uh, um, the two units are concerned. This, so this is, comes in a pair. Oh, and um, here's the HDMI input. And this is a micro USB, so this is powered by micro USB. So you can, if you have a portable battery pack, you can actually you know, power it from that. Um, and then this is the HDMI connector that goes to the uh, um, to the goggle. M Michael, quick question for you, but excellent, thank you. Uh, is there head tracking on the unit? Are you looking at options like that as well? No, we uh, decided that uh, to minimize the uh, functionality because any any functionality adds more weight and uh, additional devices that you have to put up here. So uh, actually, we like uh, uh, technologies out there like uh, Connect. Uh, that you, you know, it doesn't require any devices other than the ca uh, t actual uh, cameras. Um, uh, we, we think those technologies, instead of uh, you know us trying to adopt it, that we leave that to the, uh, the more experts in the field, and we'll we, uh, focus on the uh, core technology that we we know how to manage. And I'm curious, are there specific types of content that you're excited about? I heard about augmented reality, but are there specific markets that you're looking at that this will be directly appealing for? Well, uh, actually, for me, and you know, as an engineer, I, you know, I, I love the movie uh, Iron Man because uh, it has the uh, where uh, 3D uh, CAD program is utilized to actually, uh, you know, de design the stuff in in air. And uh, with this 50% uh, 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 see-through, you can actually uh, uh, develop CAD programs that should be able to do that. And uh, so those are kind of ap commercial applications that I like to see coming along. Excellent. So let's talk about availability and pricing. When is this going to be hitting the market and how much can we expect to spend? Uh, as far as price, we announced in December last month uh, that these units will be sold for $799. Um, as far as availability, that's still TBD, but it's fairly close. So Now, a lot of our members are based in Europe as well as in North America. Uh, where, where do you think this will be popular? 
So our goal is to make it available worldwide. We'll start with the U.S. because that's the, the most important market for us in terms of testing the market, uh, getting lots of you know, feedback from users, so that's where we're going to start. But our intention is to get certification, CE certification, as well as other certification for really worldwide distribution. Excellent. Well, thank you both for, for joining us on MTBS-TV. We've been joined by Silicon Micro Display on MTBS-TV at CES 2012. Keep watching. We'll be back with much more. We'll be back.